do not break it. Okay, so the title of the video might be a little bit clickbaity, but three of the things that are here were as a result of the Festival of Quilts and me not going. So it is technically, I didn't go to the Festival of Quilts and yet I still have a Festival of Quilts haul haul video. <laughs> That was a mouthful. I was unfortunately unable to attend the Festival of Quilts this year. I did buy a ticket. I bought a bronze VIP ticket. The terms of the ticket does say that you can't resell them, so I didn't even attempt to. But my very lovely mum and my very lovely sister-in-law, Big Bird, went to the Festival of Quilts. I didn't let mum go by herself. She did have company. And they bumped into the very lovely Debbie, who they shared my ticket with, so Debbie could come and have lunch with them and some of the hot drinks and things like that in the VIP area, which was awesome. As a thank you and completely unnecessarily Debbie bought me fabric and she knows me very very well so she bought me Lady McElroy fabric with leaves on it because of course she did. This is the Verdant Oasis I think I have that name right cotton lawn the Marley cotton lawn Debbie bought me two meters of this. Now I usually go for three meters because we all know how I like dresses with very large skirt but I have discovered that 5951 can be squeezed out of two meters a very narrow fabric and this is 140 wide so I'm really really hopeful that I will be able to get that dress out of this print in such a way that I like it. I've only ever made them out of viscose and I do have a bunch of fabrics in this cubby hole here that are all destined to be the 5951 because they are all shorter lengths of fabric that I bought because I love the print and because I had to have it regardless of the fact that there wasn't enough fabric for me to do my usual giant dress thing with. So I have an Amaryllis print back there which is another Lady McElroy. I've already made a dress and a shirt out of it. The very lovely Alex and Hedge Hubby gave me some of that for my birthday one year and I also bought a remnant from Fabric Godmother at one of the knitting and stitching shows. So I'm going to try the 5951 in the Amaryllis because as I say I already have two successful garments from that fabric. If it works in the cotton lawn that's what this will be. Debbie bought me this two meters to say thank you for my ticket which was incredibly kind of you Debbie and completely unnecessary but it's fabric with leaves on it so I'm gonna say thank you very much much appreciated. I'd also sent down well up really because the Isle of Wight is as nearly as down as you can get I'd sent up a bag of fabric for Big Bird to have a route through and see if she liked any of it and a couple of bags of clothes and some coats as well and thankfully they have decided to keep everything and as a thank you Big Bird found me this pin dish which is absolutely gorgeous. Now it has got a magnet on the back of it so it is a magnetic pin dish which I do love but I know what I'm like. I will either stab myself repeatedly using it like this or, and this is more likely, I will accidentally brush it off of the table and it will smash. Now I have got a giant collection of different pin cushions and pin dishes from you lovely lot. They're kind of like congregated on the windowsill over there so I'm gonna add this one to the collection because I really don't want to break it. I've been paranoid <laughs> all week before filming this video that I was gonna somehow manage to break it before I even got to this part of it but yeah and um, the dragon has been christened with Fanwi as well. It's absolutely gorgeous so thank you very much Big Bird that was very much appreciated and it's being added to my pin catcher collection because there's very variety of different things over there so thank you very much. And then the final directly related festival of quilts purchase is this two meters of a wool blend coating fabric which does have a texture to it from Empress Mills. Your mum is making a present for a fellow church member who is actually being ordained. I think it's called an alb it's going to be like the shawl collar and, it, and she wants it in green and it's going to be embroidered with sheep on it. Picked out the sheep, we, now we just need to find the fabric. And mum was looking at the Festival of Quilts and couldn't find anything but Empress Mills did say that they had some stuff in stock for her to have a look at so she did. Bought two meters of it and it's not quite right but it is perfectly my colours and mum has given it to me. So I am going to be making some kind of like cropped jacket with this one. I want to do something like the Angela Clayton costume jacket but obviously a little bit more pared back for everyday wear. I had a couple of boiled wool jackets from Topshop. I liked the style so much I bought it in royal blue and black. They had very kind of they actually had a very square collar that was then folded back on itself and stitched into place to make it look very kind of like organic. I really like that. So I'm thinking some kind of jacket like that 
for the autumn winter because this is going to go really well with my wardrobe it's a really good color for me as i say i've only got two meters of it so i couldn't i mean i could technically buy more and make a big skirted coat out of it but i already have so many fabrics for big skirted coats and if you haven't watched my coat pattern collection video or clear out i will list one of them up here and the other one down below in the description box down below as well so yeah this was a direct result of mum not being able to find exactly what she wanted at the festival of quilts and i'm very very grateful so thank you very much mum i have three other things to show you that were not technically festival of quilt related but I did buy them over that period of time and I get asked so often where I buy my lining fabrics from. I tend to line my clothes with one of three fabrics and it very much depends on the outer as to what the inner will be. This is a cotton lawn that I get from eBay. I will list it in the description down below. I also have it listed on the Peeps group. I have a bunch of things pinned on the Peeps group, my most frequently purchased things. This is one of them. I've got six meters of this and I will be lining my 5951s with this. I use cotton lawn when I'm using cotton lawn on the outer. I also use cotton lawn when I want a little bit more structure in some of my viscose pieces. I will sometimes interline viscose bodices with cotton lawn just so that there's a little, as I say, structure in the actual bodice and then still the viscose floatiness for the skirts. I've done that for a couple of grace dresses. I've done that for a couple of Vogue dresses and it works really well for me. I did it for the Vogue 8997 and you can see that in the sew along which I will link up here and also in the description down below. It's just one of my favorite things to wear next to my skin which is why I use it so frequently for lining different things. The other linings I use are a slippery lotus lining from Lady McElroy. It's a viscose acetate blend which is all natural fibers and feels really nice against the skin and that's when you want something really really slinky i use that for sleeve linings for coats i also use it for some of the heavier suitings that i use because for those fabrics i tend to want to wear them in the cooler months so i want something that's going to be slippery against tights and slips so a slippery fabric for those and then my other favorite lining is viscose maricane that i get from the fabric room i buy that usually 20 meters at a time it's usually i think three pound 40 per meter i use that to line majority of my viscose pieces sometimes i'll line this, the bodice in the same print and then line the skirt in the viscose maricane sometimes i'll use the viscose maricane for the entirety of the lining it depends very much on the print and the fabric and how sheer it is but it's also very very fluid and floaty so it's very similar to the the viscose that i'm going to be using on the outside sometimes i'll use a viscose lawn a viscose chalet a viscose maricane Maricane on the outside, a viscose crepe, a viscose twill, slightly heavier weight, but the maricane is really, really nice underneath of it because it has the same fluidity and motion and it just works really, really well as a lining. So I will list all of my linings that I like in the description down below, but I did get asked quite a few times where I get my cotton lawn from. So I've got six meters here. It was five pounds per meter. Link is in the description down below. So during Knitmas last year, I made the Ride Your Bomber jacket in the cobra corsage velvet i decided to fully line that in a fleecy kind of furry stretch fabric that i got from guthrie and garni and loads of you guys asked for a tutorial on how to line a rigel bomber jacket or an online jacket now i've done one of those with the how to line a sorrento jacket which again i'll list up here and in the description down below but you wanted to see specifically how i did it for the rigel which meant that i needed to go through my stash and find a fabric that would work and i found this one it's got lemurs it's got monkeys it's got cockatiels it's got all sorts of butterflies berries leaves and flowers it's absolutely glorious this is a upholstery weight fabric from textile express i don't know if they still have this particular print in i will try and list to theirs down below but i have a meter of this which i am hoping is going to be enough for the rigel bomber jacket although i've downsized it and cropped it so that it works for my 
personal preference so I think I will have enough here if not I've got some other fabrics that will work really nicely with this so I could do solid sleeves that's you know one of the beauties of kind of those sorts of jackets is that there's quite a lot of variety that you can play around with I didn't have the right color ribbing in my stash and you've probably been sitting here looking at it going that's very bright and it is indeed it is this kind of bright yellow with a off-white stripe and I think this is a dark navy it probably is meant to be black but it definitely is reading lighter than black and I actually really like these two together again it's going to be a really loud jacket it's got lemurs and monkeys and cockatiels all over it it's going to be a loud jacket but I really like the combination of these two I think this color brings out some of the yellow tones in the print so I think they work really nicely together I got this from Etsy I have got two meters of it so I'm hoping that's going to be enough fingers crossed it will be otherwise I can order some more but it did take a while to get here then as I say this is the lining fluffy and then I have a white zip for this so I was going to wait until it was kind of more weather appropriate to make a jacket but it's middle of August and it's raining outside and I've got a long sleeved what I class as my autumn winter dress on so maybe I'll be doing that project a lot sooner than I thought but the lined Rigel bomber jacket tutorial will be coming very soon. And then my final purchase recently that I had to share with you were these kitty cat labels from So Anonymous. How cute are they? So the very lovely Catherine was hanging out with me on one of the Patreon exclusive zoom calls that I do every week and she'd sewed one of these little labels into the cuff of the shirt and I just thought that was genius because if you've been around the channel for any amount of time you know I really really don't like labels on the inside of my clothes if I get if I do buy anything ready to wear which doesn't happen often anymore I will cut them out but I just loved that she'd placed one like it was underneath of the collar at uh, the cuff sorry and it was just poking out she's also sent me some pictures where she's sewn them into like the collar of a jacket I just thought it was a really really cute idea so anonymous were doing a discount because it was cat uh, World Cat Day, National Cat Day. I mean, when is not National Cat Day? Every day is National Cat Day, but they were doing a 10% discount because of it. I think the discount code is finished, but the labels were not expensive and I've bought a bunch of them. So I've got the little kitty paw and then the little kitty. And I'm also planning on doing one poking out from a breast pocket on a shirt. I think that would be really cute. I have some amazing cat fabric in my stash that one of you lovely lot have sent me. So I'm sure, and it's a black cat fabric. So one of these little labels or these little labels or both will have to be featured on that little shirt when it gets made. So that was my last purchase. So as I say, for someone who didn't go to the Festival of Quilts because I was saving money, I've done quite well on my Festival of Quilts haul. Thank you so much to Mum, Nia and Debbie for treating me and then thank you to Catherine for pointing me in the direction of those labels. I'm really excited to get working on all of these projects. Which one do you think I should do first? I'm thinking the 5951 out of the Amaryllis to check that I like it in the lawn before I cut into this lawn but it's definitely a palette cleanser and I've just finished the third Star Trek dress and that dress is cursed and that one is not a success either so I definitely need something that's going to be a win I'm thinking the 5951 but I'd love to hear what you think if you've enjoyed this video you might want to check out this one here 